that mic. Uh, we're a website, and what we do is we harness crowd wisdom to solve difficult medical cases online, uh, particularly rare diseases and difficult to diagnose uh, medical conditions. And I always like to start with the inspiration behind the company, which is my little sister, who herself spent three years with a, uh, what turned out to be a rare disease. And it took, a, as I'm sure any parents in the room have been through, uh, many doctors and many years, and in her case, six-figure medical bills before she finally got diagnosed. So I came to understand how ill-equipped our medical system is when it comes to diagnosing patients with rare or, or difficult conditions. And I wanted to create a mechanism to help these patients get a diagnosis much more quickly and much more efficiently, which is what gave birth to CrowdMed. And now what's pretty cool is oh, about two and a half years later, we've now resolved over a thousand real world uh, medical mysteries on our site. And uh, we have, and, and these are very difficult cases where the average patient has been sick for seven years. Uh, they've already seen eight doctors they and their insurance company have already incurred over $70,000 in medical expenses. And on our site, we resolve these cases using this crowdsourced approach in an average of about two months, uh, getting an average of almost two dozen different medical detectives on each case. And I'll speak later about who they are. And our cost is very, very low, uh, less than $300 per case is what it costs us internally to resolve these cases. And our retail pricing is about $500 per case on average. So, and we have about a 60% overall success rate, which means that the patient told us ultimately that they got insights on our site that led them to a correct diagnosis or cure. So it's safe to say that our approach is working. This crowdsourcing approach is working very, very well uh, with a high success rate, uh, resolving cases that eight doctors on average could not, could not figure out what was, what, was, what was the problem. And in a very small fraction of the time and cost of what it would take in the traditional medical system. So uh, we, can, we can safely say the hypothesis is correct, and, and this, there's something to be said for crowdsourcing medical answers with, uh, with the right mechanisms in place. I'm going to kind of breeze through this because these slides are really more for insurance companies, but um, as you may have guessed, uh, the, the going forward medical costs for these patients are much lower, and their uh, provider utilization rates, how many uh, doctors they visit per month, is much lower. So we're actually saving a lot of money for the healthcare system as a whole, and particularly for payers. Uh, because uh, wouldn't they like to have a 75% reduction in provider visits and about a 40% reduction in medical costs going forward as a result of the patient getting the answers they need on our site for a few hundred bucks, um, which actually can save them um, over eight times what we cost in the first year alone. Um, and of course, the medical costs continue to trend downwards as the patient now has a diagnosis and treatment plan. Um, so I'll, I'll go in this slide in too much detail, but the, the, the point is that the patients that we serve are a small percent of the population, maybe just two or three percent of the U.S. population, but they account for a huge portion of medical costs in our system. Uh, we think uh, 12 to 15 percent of total U.S. medical costs. So if we can reduce costs, well, we've seen through our studies that we can reduce costs for that population by about 40 percent going forward, which means we could literally cut out hundreds of billions of dollars from the U.S. medical system, or maybe about $150 billion from the US medical system if this was widely distributed, which is what we're working on now. Um, one way to think of us is kind of comparing us to a, any of those 130 plus centers of excellence. Uh, you guys are familiar with these uh, organizations like the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic and Stanford Clinic. Uh, these uh, brick and mortar institutions that often take on these difficult cases. And if you compare our website to them, which is a, a fair comparison to make, uh, because there's a lot of overlap in our patients. Uh, you know, a quarter of our patients have visited at least one center of excellence. Uh, almost universally, our patients feel their CrowdMed experience was at least as good, if not better. Most of them actually say better. And we have a, a two orders of magnitude less cost per patient. So uh, from an from a investment standpoint, um, uh, we're a lot more efficient compared to these centers of excellence who, who charge, well, whose average revenue per patient per year is almost $50,000. Um, I'm going to skip over some of these just in the interest of time. Um, our, our patients, uh, almost universally, almost no patients feel their crowdment experience was any worse than what they got in the traditional medical system. That's partially because we provide a good user experience, partially because the medical system is really broken for patients that don't have common ailments. 
Um, but uh, that's, you know, from a subjectively speaking, our patients tend to love our site and, and really prefer it over what they experience in the medical system. And even those who say it's about the same, it's because they didn't get better answers, essentially. Um, and what's, what's cool is just now we've started to get more academic validation for all the results we've produced. So we've had uh, studies written from us and, and currently under review for publication in major medical journals by Stanford, uh, Stanford a School of Medicine, the Baylor College of Medicine, uh, Scripps Research Institute is doing a study on us right now. Um, I've spoken about our results at uh, major healthcare events. I gave a TED talk uh, last year at TEDMED. Uh, the Personalized Medicine World Conference uh, a few months ago in Silicon Valley, and uh, the Rock Health Innovation Summit I spoke at last year as well. So we're starting to get more recognition within the medical establishment, which is, which is great. It's going to help us, I think, bring the product more mainstream. Of course, uh, we have hundreds of success stories. Um, individual patients who we've e either saved their life or dramatically improved the quality of their life after many years of struggle. Um, I've got a couple in this presentation that I'm in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through, but every week we hear from a patient saying, you know, wow, you saved my life. Or, uh, you know, I, got, I learned something on your site that I hadn't learned in many years of suffering, and now I'm on a path to, to my cure. So uh, it's, that's gratifying that it's not just about the statistics, but there's hundreds of individual stories of people whose lives we've dramatically impacted, and that keeps us going. So I'll walk through kind of the patient experience, you know, how, how our site works. Now that we've talked about how well it works, I'll talk about kind of how it works for patients. Um, and then separately, we can talk about how it works for the case solvers or medical detectives. And we've spent now over $2 million in two and a half years and um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears developing the optimal technology for crowdsourcing medical answers, which is no easy feat technically. Um, it's not as simple as just people throwing up answers. There's, there's a lot of structure and mechanisms and checks and balances you have to have in place to kind of separate the signal and the noise and, and make sure only the best answers make it to the patient because when you crowdsource something, you get junky answers as well. And I'll walk through first the patient experience, what patients go through on our site. So it starts with the patient completing our online patient questionnaire. And we ask about things like their uh, symptoms and their family medical history, and their personal medical history. And they can upload diagnostic test results and imaging test results. And some patients anonymize and upload their entire medical records. So we're really trying to make sure there's enough clues in there to present to our community so they can kind of sleuth out the right answers. So these first two steps are just about data collection. But our patients, many of them spend hours completing our patient questionnaire and um, trying to dig up the medical data to give to our detectives because you know, detectives need, need good clues. Once the data is collected and the case is live on our site, then there's a lot of uh, communication and collaboration that happens between the patients and our medical detectives. So there's chat where the medical detectives ask questions to the patient, say, hey, can you, can you uh, explain the symptom in more detail? Or can you have this test run and send us the results? Or uh, you know, have you considered or you know, discussed X diagnosis with your doctor? It's a lot of back and forth. And as I mentioned, there was 22 medical detectives on average on each case. And patients love that they get to talk with 22 people at once, as opposed to seeing one doctor at a time with often months between physician appointments. So things happen much, much more rapidly on our site as we have lots of people talking to the patient all at once and also talking to each other. So it's a very collaborative, communicative uh, uh, system, whereas in the medical system, the, the typical model is one patient talking with one doctor at a time and not very much collaboration between the patient's different physicians. And, and as you guys know, they get, I think the current statistic is 10 minutes on average with each doctor, which is not enough if you have a complicated illness. Um, so there's this chat, there's, the, there's discussion boards where detectives and patients are debating why a certain diagnosis might be right or wrong. Uh, there's a, a, a patented prediction market technology that um, I won't go into much detail in the interest of time, but we're essentially collecting consensus around certain answers. So it's not just anecdotal, but we're getting the consensus opinion of these 20 plus people on what the patient most likely has. And we measure that through them betting or allocating points to different suggestions. And they can win points and even cash by, by, by making good suggestions and by supporting what turns out to be the right answer. We'll go through our incentive structure later, but cash is a piece of it. We have other, various other incentives for detectives as well. And then finally, at the end of the process, which is typically two to three months, the patient gets a, a beautifully formatted PDF report that they can then take with them to their doctor 
that, that says, here's the most likely diagnoses for the patient. Here's a probability assigned to each one. Here's why these diagnoses or solutions are probably correct. Here's all the chat correspondence, all the discussion history. We're trying to arm the patient to say, hey, doc, I really probably have X. And you know, let's, let's confirm this or, or rule it out. And if it's confirmed, let's, let's begin treatment. So it's still up to the patient's physician, ultimately, to confirm the diagnosis and prescribe the appropriate treatment. But we're trying to make that conversation the patient has with their primary doctor much, much more efficient. You know, out of the 10,000 diseases known to man, here's the two or three or four that this patient probably has. And as you can imagine, we're, we're usually under, uncovering rare diseases or things that, the, that many physicians have never even heard of before. So these are often very insightful suggestions that would not have been considered otherwise. Um, and speaking of rare diseases, we have a few statistics on our patients. Um, the most interesting chart here is the one in the middle at the top. This is the, you probably can't read it very well, but it's a, a frequency distribution of all of the different diagnoses that we've uncovered since launch. And no single diagnosis is more than 2% of our total. Uh, that most common one is Lyme disease, but even that's, well, that's 2.3%. All the other ones are under 2%. And 95% of our diagnoses have come up only once or twice ever on our site. So we're truly uncovering very obscure, rare things that, you know, it's a very long tail of diseases that most doctors have never heard of before. Um, so people often ask me, you know, who are these medical detectives? And uh, the short answer is they're not all doctors. We found that works very well, with all due respect to physicians. Um, most of them do work in or study medicine, and the most common job categories are either doctors, med students, or nurses. But it's a very diverse group, and that's by design. And for that matter, it's not limited to medical professionals. We have a lot of patients on our site trying to help people that, who probably have an undiagnosed, probably the same disease that they have, but undiagnosed. Because patients often know much more about specific diseases than the vast majority of doctors do. I see heads nodding. <laughs> Especially probably the patients in this, or patient caregivers in this room. Um, you probably know more about, you know, your disease or what your child has than, than most doctors you talk to. And we want to capture that wisdom on our site, which is why we don't limit it to physicians. And even amongst the medical professionals, we've got medical researchers and scientists and alternative medical providers, nutritionists. And it's really diverse because we think that, you know, Western trained medical doctors don't have all the answers. And that's why we try to build in this cognitive diversity into our, into our community. I'll skip through this one. Medical detectives, they love the experience even more than our patients do. That's the, the short version of this slide. Um, so what incentivizes medical, these medical detectives? Um, I'll start by mentioning cash, because that's a component of it. But frankly, that's not a primary motivator. So patients can, on our site can optionally offer a cash reward who goes to the medical detectives who perform best in their case, who do the best job, and we measure performance in several different ways. But all of the cash rewards on our site are performance-based. So as a detective, you get nothing for just showing up. You get nothing for just participating in a case. You only can make a reward, cash or otherwise, by performing well as determined by the patient. So uh, that, I think, incentivizes the right behavior. Uh, but that cash piece, having mentioned it, and we have some detectives who have made thousands of dollars on our site, but if you look at the average amount of money won per detective per hour, it's like $3. And these are mostly highly paid, highly trained medical professionals whose time is worth more than $3 an hour. So it, it's fair to say they're not doing it for the money. Uh, they're doing it primarily for these intrinsic things. Uh, learning, altruism, uh, uh, expanding the reputation on our site and trying to climb the ranks. We have a leaderboard and a reputation system and it's very competitive to try to kind of make the top 10 each month. So um, we've tried to tap into more intrinsic rewards, basically to keep costs down for our patients. A little bit about our team, which I'll skip through. Our investors in this audience, I'll skip through that. Oh, the actor Patrick Dempsey, people know him. Um, these are our consumer packages. So uh, you know, we, we charge this on a subscription basis between $99 a month and $249 a month. Um, we're, we're trying just now to start partnering with insurance companies and basically make it free for patients and paid for by their insurance company as a reimbursable expense. And the argument for the insurance company is, you know, hey, we can save you a ton of money. Like, you know, you give us $500, but we know statistically we'll save you 4000 in the first year. So if you guys have any contacts, by the way, uh, you know, C-level contacts at insurance companies, let me know, because we're, we're doing a big business development effort to them. Um, also some at-risk provider groups. 
um, at-risk employers, large employers. We're trying to partner with all of them to essentially, ultimately we want to make CrowdMed free to patients. But until we figured out that business model, um, we're still charging patients per month. Um, in most cases are only up for two or three months. So it's typically no more than a few hundred dollars, which for a lot of patients is, is still worth paying out of pocket you know, to get cured or have a good chance of getting a correct diagnosis or cure. Um, and there's also this CrowdMed Patient Relief Fund, um, which was mentioned in, I think, in the, top, in the, in the description of the uh, session. And that's a, a, a crowdfunding campaign um, that so far raised over $10,000 that sponsors cases for patients who can't afford it. So if a patient comes to our site and says, hey, I have a case, I can't afford these monthly fees, um, we have uh, money we've raised to sponsor cases for these patients at, at no cost to them. And um, uh, that's an ongoing thing. And um, uh, we set up an Indiegogo campaign. That campaign's closed. We're going to start another one. But uh, that's, if anyone here has interest in either donating to that, campa that campaign or if you need to submit a case to pull from that campaign, just let me know. How am I doing on time? Two minutes. Okay. In that case, I'll open it for questions. Any questions? Um, about how long does it take to fill out the questionnaire? And is the questionnaire the same for all patients? Yep, the questionnaire, it branches a little bit, depending on your answers. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, we don't customize it for each, each, each patient, other than the branching that's built in, the branching logic that's built in. Um, it, it, it's up to the patient. Some patients only spend 30 minutes on it. Other patients spend 10 hours. It kind of depends on how detailed they want to go. Um, we encourage patients to go deep and to really provide in-depth answers. But it can be done in as little as 30 minutes if, if you're in a rush. And approximately how many patients have filled out the questionnaire, how many solutions came out of those inquiries, and then how do you go about getting feedback to find out if your PDF that you sent the patient is accurate? Okay. Did they win or not? Sure. I'll start with the last question. Um, we have a post-case survey, with two, two post-case surveys we give to patients, one at 30 days post-case after their case is concluded, and one at 90 days after their case is concluded. And we ask questions like, uh, you know, have you discussed the results with your doctor? Um, what do you and your physician feel is the, is the best answer you received on the site? You know, were you brought closer to a correct diagnosis or cure? How satisfied were you with the process? We have lots of questions. We, 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 we ask them to collect feedback on, on how well things worked and also how we should allocate the reward to our medical detectives. Um, so that post-case fe post feedback is very important. Um, in terms of how many cases have been submitted, we've had a, over 4,000 patients uh, either uh, begin, our begin or complete our patient questionnaire, and about 1,200 cases have gone live on our site. Um, some patients don't pay. A lot of patients don't pay, so the case never goes live. But um, of those patients who either pay or, or they get a free case um, you know, through our, our, our CrowdMed Patient Relief Fund, um, we've had over 1,200 that have gone on the site and actually all the way to completion. Over 1,200 have been completely resolved on our site. And as I mentioned before, about 60% of those successfully. I mean that the patient in their post-case survey told us that they actually got insights that led them to a correct diagnosis or cure, led them closer to a correct diagnosis or cure. Um, is, that, is that all your questions? Okay. Hi. Uh, did I understand correctly that it's theoretical deduction? So like the detectives aren't ordering labs or doing anything like that? They're not They can't order labs. the labs, but they can suggest it to the patient. Right. So right. they can say, hey, you know, I, I'd really like to see, you know, this, this lab value. And the patient could then you know, go to their doctor and say, you know, hey, I'd like to have this test run. And then they can upload the result to our site, and all the detectives can see it. And so does that account for, I think you said sometimes it takes up to two months to get a, uh, kind of a, a resolution. Is that, does that account for some of the time? Like, yeah. Okay. And, and, and some cases are for longer. Sometimes patients, and it's one of the reasons we have it monthly is so that patients can keep the case up as long as they want. Some patients, mm -hmm. they want it up for six months to have time to really have a lot of back and forth. Um, the, part of that, the, the, the two or three month average on our site Part of that is allowing time for this back and forth between the detectives and the patient and the patient's doctor and all that. Of course, it's best if the patient's doctor actually participates as a detective, and we sure. encourage patients to invite them to. Um, that just cuts out the middleman a lot. Um, but and part of it is, is just the time it takes to gather all these 22 or so people that we want to get on a case. Um, not everyone participates in the first day. Oh, so the 22, you said on average 22, are they self-selecting? So you basically, you post it on the network, anyone who wants to participate can, or Correct. do you? Okay. Self-selected. Okay. And, and one of the reasons we have this performance-based incentive structure is that as a detective, you will only participate in a case if you actually think you can solve it. Otherwise, you have no incentive to. 
So then it's just a matter of providing the right case discovery tools to make it easy to find the cases that match your expertise. And we have a lot of, if I have more time, I'd explain them, a lot of case discovery tools to, to help the detectives find the right cases. Thank you so much, Jared. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Sure.